Welcome to another session. In this session, I am going to discuss about apomixis. To better understand apomixis, we must have a sound knowledge about the structure of flower and the nature of female gametophyte. Flower is the most beautiful part of plant. The flower consists of n axis with lateral appendages. Generally, a flower is composed of four distinct holes calyx, corolla, androsium, and gynosium. Calyx is the outermost hole and is composed of green leaf like structures called sepals. The sepals protect flower during bud stages. Corolla is the second hole of flower and is composed of petals. Petals are generally large, colorful and attract insects for pollination. The third hole of flower is androsium and it represents the male reproductive structures. Androsium is composed of stamens which are male reproductive organs. Gynosium is the fourth hole of the flower and represent the female reproductive structure of flower and each unit of the gynosium is known as pistil. Each pistil has three parts stigma, style and ovary. The topmost flat portion of the pistil is called stigma. Stigma serve as the landing platform for pollen grains and the elongated Slender part of the pistil is called style. The basal swollen part of the pistil is called ovary. Inside the ovary, one or more small ovules are produced. Now, ovule is attached to the placenta by means of a stalk called funicle. The body of the ovule fuses with funicle in the region called hilum. Each ovule has one or two protective layers called integument layer. Integuments encircles the ovule except at the tip where a small opening is present which is called the micropyle. Opposite to the micropylar end, there is a chalaja and the chalaja represents the basal part of the ovule. A mass of cells is enclosed within the integument and is called Nucellus. The cells of Nucellus have abundant reserve food material. Embryo sac or female gametophyte is located in the Nucellus. An ovule generally has a single embryo sac. The embryo sac is formed from a megaspore through meiosis. A typical embryo sac is eight cell structure at maturity and a group of three cells lying towards the micropylar end is called the egg apparatus. The central cell of the egg apparatus is known as the egg cell and it forms the female gamete. The other two cells, one on each side of the egg cell are called the synergids. The egg cell after fusion with the male gamete give rise to the embryo and the synergids are non-functional, short-lived and disintegrate soon after the fertilization. The another group of three cells at the chalagel end and lying opposite to the egg apparatus are called the antipodal cells. The antipodal cells have no definite functions and they disintegrate after the fertilization of the egg cell. And a group of two cells are remain lie in the center of an embryo sac and form the polar nuclei. Now the apomixis in some plants meiosis and syngamy are interrupted and still a viable embryo is formed within the seed such as sexual seeds which produce progeny identical to female parent are called apomictic seeds and this phenomena is called Apomixis. Apomixis derived from two Greek words. Apo means away from and the second one is mixis means the act of mixing. Means the away from the act of mixing means away from the syngamy or the union of two gametes to form a zygote. 
and the apomixis was firstly discovered by the Leeuwenhoek in 1719 in citrus seeds. Apomixis is an asexual means of reproduction. It refers to the formation of a seed without fertilization or sexual reproduction. Apomixis is very common in higher plants. It has been reported in more than 300 species belonging to 35 families and it is most common in Poaceae, Astraceae, Rogaceae and Rutaceae families. The examples of the Apomixis are it is commonly occur in Citrus, Allium, Poa, Terexicum, Heracium etc. The major cereals such as maize and wheat show the Apomixis phenomena. Now types of Apomixis. Generally four types of Apomixis are recognized. The first one is Vegetative Apomixis. The second one is Recurrent Apomixis. The third one is Non-Recurrent Apomixis and the fourth one is Adventive Embryoini. Now the first one is Vegetative Apomixis. The Vegetative Apomixis takes place through the vegetative parts of plants other than the seeds. Means Plants propagates by a part of their body other than the seeds and these plant part by which a plant vegetatively propagates are called as the propagules. Here the examples of the propagules are tuber which is found in solenum tuberosum commonly known as potato. The second one is rhizomes which are found in gingiver officinale musa paradisiaca. The next one is the bulbs which is commonly found in Allium sepa, Allium sativa species and the next one is the vegetative birds. The vegetative birds are commonly found in the Fragaria, the species of Agave, Pova. The second one is current apomixis. In case of the current apomixis, the embryo sac develop without meiosis from diploid cell and the recurrent apomixis is maybe three types. The first one is diploispory. In case of the diploispory, the embryo sac develops from the megaspore mother cell through mitotic division. The diploispory is commonly found in the species of Terexicum, Allium, etc. The second one is the apoispory. In case of the apoispory, the embryo sac originates from the any diploid cell except megaspore mother cell either directly by mitosis or after interrupted meiosis. The apospory is commonly found in the species of Heracium, Penicetum, Pova, Mangifera, Opensia, etc. Now the third type is the androgenesis. In case of the androgenesis, the embryo sac originates from the generative nucleus of pollen tube cells. The third one is non-recurrent apomixis. In case of non-recurrent apomixis, the embryo develops from any haploid cell of embryo cell. The non-recurrent apomixis may be further of two types. The first one is haploid parthenogenesis. In case of the haploid parthenogenesis, the embryo develops from X cell of embryo cell without fertilization. Haploid parthenogenesis is very rare and reported only in few cases, for example, in Solenum nigrum. Solenum nigrum is a member of family Solenaceae. The second one is haploid apogamy. Haploid apogamy is also known as the pseudogamy. In case of the haploid apogamy, embryo develops from synergids or antipodal cells of the female gametophyte, and the haploid apogamy is commonly found in case of the allium species. The next one is the adventive embryoini. The embryo develops by mitotic divisions and forms bud-like structures. Simultaneously, fertilization in adjoining sexual embryo sac is required to form a viable seeds and the developing embryos grow towards it to obtain nutrients and signal from the embryo cell. The adventive embryoini is a type of sporophytic apomixis where embryos are produced directly from the nucleus or the integuments of the ovule.
For example, it is commonly found in case of the Mangifera indica and the citrus species. It is also occur in the family Buxaceae, Cactaceae, Euphorbiaceae, Martaceae and the Orchidaceae. Thus, the gametophytic generation is completely eliminated in case of the adventive embryony that deployed sporophytic cells directly grow into mature embryo inside the seeds. Now here I am taking example of citrus where the formation of adventive embryos takes place through the apomixis. In citrus, beside zygotic embryos, the formation of extra embryos is takes place due to the sporophytic budding. One or more sporophytic cells, either nucellus or integuments, undergo stages of embryogeny and eventually develop into mature embryos and these extra embryos are called as the adventive embryos. And here you can see this is in the center, the X cell fuses with the male gamete, uh, forms the zygotic embryo, while as you will find in this diagram the other embryos in the nucellus and the integument layers. And here these extra embryos which are uh, regenerated or forms through the nucellus layer as well as the integument layers are known as the extra embryos and these extra embryos are called as the adventive embryos. Now the applications of the apomixis. Apomixis assured plants production in the absence of pollinators such as in extreme environments and it is one of the most cost effective methods to produce seeds. And the main applications of the apomixis are the first one is rapid production of pure line and multiplication of genetically uniform individuals without risk of segregation. The next one is maintenance of superior genotype means it maintain the characteristics of mother plant from generation to generations. The next one is fixation and conservation of heterosis in hybrids. Thus, we can say apomixis prevents the loss of specific characters in case of hybrids. In citrus, adventive embryony is being used in the production of uniform root stock and virus-free scion material. We have also some disadvantages of the apomixis. The first one is, it is very complicated phenomena as the genetic basis of the apomixis is not clear. The second one is, in case of the absence of morphological markers linked with apometric development, maintenance of the apometric stock become difficult. And usually it is restricted to narrow ecological niches, lack ability to adapt to changing environment. This is all about the apomixis. I hope this lecture will be very fruitful to you. If you have any doubt, any question in your mind regarding to this lecture, you may write in the comment box. Thanks for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe this channel for new updates.